What's the connection between a silent film legend and one of the biggest horror franchises created a century after the end of her career? I'll explain, but first, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss more insights into movies past and present. When I was in theaters watching Ty West's 2024 horror film, Maxine, there was a moment that stood out to me immediately. Mia Goss' character, Maxine, is smoking a cigarette on Hollywood Boulevard and puts it out onto a Hollywood star. This star belonged to Theda Berra. It was clear this was a very deliberate choice on the part of the filmmaker. They could have just showed empty sidewalk or, in the same vein, used literally any star there. So why Theda Berra? I jotted down the name quickly to dive in later, and after leaving the theater, I googled Theda Berra and started seeing the connections immediately. Theda Berra's life thematically ties into the X trilogy. She was one of cinema's earliest sex symbols, often portraying the femme fatale. Known for her revealing costumes and distinct eye makeup, Berra's image was both alluring and powerful. And much like Maxine, Theda Berra had a burning desire to be a star. Some of her most famous quotes are, To be good is to be forgotten. I'm going to be so bad, I'll always be remembered. And the reason good women like me and flock to my pictures is that there's a little bit of vampire instinct in every woman. Quotes like this capture the essence of both Berra and Maxine's characters. Bold, unforgettable, and a bit dangerous. For those who think I'm reading too much into a quick shot of a star on Hollywood Boulevard, the connections go a little bit deeper than you think. About a week ago, I came across a post from a Mia Goth fan account that explained there's even a deeper connection to the other films in the trilogy. The post pointed out that Maxine wasn't the first film in Ty West trilogy to reference Theta Berra. In Pearl, which takes place in 1918, the movie theater advertisements feature the now lost 1917 film Cleopatra, starring none other than Berra. And in case that connection wasn't clear enough, did you notice that Pearl's alligator is actually named Theta? Theta! Go on, girl! I'd realized that Pearl's other barn animals are clearly named after a silent film actress at the time. That's Charlie. This is Mary. This is Francis. And Maxine makes clear reference to Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin, but I'd never place the importance of the name Theta. I realize now that the reason that I and many others aren't as familiar with Theta is likely due to the fact that much of her filmography is sadly lost to history. Although she was a prolific performer making more than 40 films between 1914 and 1926, most of them were destroyed in a fire that wiped out the Fox Vault in 1937, in addition to more than 75% of Fox's feature films made before 1930. According to Museum of Modern Art film curator Dave Kerr, there are entire careers that don't exist because of the fire. This tragic loss makes the references made by Ty West in Pearl and Maxine even more poignant, as they help keep Theda Berra's legacy alive and are introducing her to new generations of moviegoers like myself. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Theda Berra's influence on Pearl and Maxine, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for more cinematic insights. And be sure to let me know in the comments, what's your favorite influence from a silent film on a modern piece of cinema? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.